Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about the origin of water on Earth, and we're going to focus on the abundance of water over billions of years of Earth's history has allowed life to evolve on our planet, and we're going to limit our hypotheses for the origin of water on Earth to asteroids and reasons for retention to gravity and temperatures low enough to condense water. So in this particular video, we're going to focus on the hypothesis that asteroids are the origin of water, and once Earth received water, it retains the the water due to gravity and low temperatures. So we're going to start our discussion of water on Earth by looking at Earth from space. The first observation that one would make is that it does have a substantial amount of water, and in fact, 70% of Earth's surface is covered with water. Now, some of that water is fresh water, but most of it is ocean water. So the bulk of the liquid water on Earth would be salt water. And a lot of that water is incredibly deep, specifically talking oceans. So there is a really, really large amount of liquid water on our planet. Earth's temperatures are perfect in that they allow water to change phases from liquid to solid to gas, but most remains as liquid water, meaning the temperatures of Earth are conducive to holding liquid water on our planet. And Earth is very large, and it has enough gravitational pull to retain the water near its surface, which is already housed on Earth and doesn't allow it to float away. So the reason that we stay on Earth as a physical being is the same reason due to gravitational pull that the water stays on Earth as well. If we look at the breakdown of Earth's water supply, you see that of the water on Earth, roughly 97% of all liquid water is going to be contained within the oceans, meaning it is salt, and that leaves roughly 3% of Earth's water as fresh water, and if we break down fresh water into its components, 70% of the Earth's fresh water, so again, 70% of this 3%, is contained within the ice caps and glaciers, which means it's locked as a solid. 29% of that 3% fresh water is groundwater, so it is contained within the ground, deep underground. And then roughly 1% of that 3%, so very small fraction of a percentage, is going to be easily accessible fresh water, meaning this is the fresh water that we actually have access to. Roughly 52% of that 1% would be lakes, 38% of that 1% will be soil moisture, so that is the water that is contained within the soil. 1% of that 1% will be water vapor, so this is the water that is in the atmosphere. That's like humidity. 1% is water in living things, so that would be water that is contained within living organisms like us, and then 1% would be rivers, which would be, again, fresh water, but those are flowing typically from higher elevation to lower elevation and typically dump into oceans. So if we look at the crust and the layers associated with the crust from the inner core all the way out to the atmosphere, you'll notice that the bulk of the liquid water is contained within the outside most layer, which is actually accessible water to the surface. Those can be oceans, rivers, lakes, ponds, streams. But there is a major water bearing layer right in the middle of kind of this upper mantle and lower mantle layer. This is not easily accessible. It is deep within the earth, but some of the water that helps form our planet is almost permanently trapped deep in this crust. Temperatures deep in the earth are tremendously high, but there are few opportunities for this water to escape. You will notice that as we transition deeper into the earth towards the core, the temperature increases, but most of the time this heat is retained within the earth and is not allowed to escape. There is areas in which a lot of this steam and heat can escape, and we call these areas geysers. There is one famous geyser in Yellowstone National Park. It erupts every 14 to 18 hours, so it is fairly regular. That is the amount of time it takes for the pressure of the heated water inside the earth to reach a temperature that would be conducive to erupting. The discharge of water is due to an underground magma, superheating water partially trapped in the crust. As water heats, the molecules spread out, leading to increased pressure. And when the pressure exceeds the amount of pressure keeping that water vapor in the earth, it obviously has nowhere to go but out. There are only a few areas on Earth where water deep in the crust can escape in this way. Again, they are geysers, and you can physically watch the water vapor and liquid water 
erupt through these holes in the crust, discharging that pressure and leading to a discharge of that water that was trapped very deep within the earth. Water molecules exist in two forms. There is normal water, which would be water that is just H2O, and then we have what is called heavy water, which has deuterium, which is called D2O. Again, both are water. They do have some differences. Normal water, ordinary hydrogen atoms bound to an oxygen atom. This is the type of water we've always talked about in our past videos, no matter what topic we were talking about. Hydrogen atoms are uh, on the periodic table as one, so they have one proton, one electron. They do not normally contain neutrons because they have an atomic mass of one. Heavy water, on the other case, contains hydrogen atoms that have a neutron, making them heavier than normal, meaning they have an, an increased atomic mass. This hydrogen is called deuterium, and it is still hydrogen, but it would be hydrogen with an atomic mass of two instead of one because it not only has its one proton, but it also has its one neutron, leading to double the mass, meaning it is te technically double the weight. All bodies of water contain a mix of these two forms, with typical water, the no neutrons, being much more common, but we can use the ratio or the concentration of these two types of water to give us some data on where the water may have come from and how the bodies of water may be related. So that brings in our hypothesis as we talked about in the beginning of the video from asteroids. And when researchers calculate the ratio of hydrogen to deuterium in the water of the oceans, they get a ratio that is very similar to the ratio found in many asteroids. And when they sample the water on these asteroids, which are obviously not from Earth, they do find that there is a ratio or a mixture of both normal water and heavy water. All of our bodies of water on Earth contain a ratio of these two types of water as well, which leads to and solidifies, or at least strengthens, the hypothesis that water on Earth originated from outside of Earth and was probably brought to Earth by an asteroid very similar to this one. A common theory is that Earth had an early stage where the surface was nothing other than magma. It was our early protoplanet. It was very hot. It was very geologically active. No water was found in this early planet, probably. Again, no one was there collecting data, so we don't know for certain. Over very long periods of geological time, as the Earth cooled, numerous asteroids struck the Earth, bringing hydrated minerals that released water, becoming part of Earth's crust. This early protoplanet, as Earth began to cool, probably received a lot of collisions with these types of asteroids, which brought about the hydrated minerals that eventually became liquid water. Our planet's early history had many more asteroid collisions because of the unsettled time period of our early solar system. There were many millions of years in which the collisions could have occurred, and all of those millions of collisions probably brought about small traces of these hydrated minerals, which over millions of years can obviously congregate and concentrate to produce the needed materials for water. Obviously, this is a hypothesis. This is not an idea that is proven, but there is a lot of evidence that helps strengthen this hypothesis. So that's it for this particular video. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Leave your questions in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. We will see you later.